So good to have you here. Appreciate every one of you, and the Lord knows the sacrifice that you've given, and He will reward you. Um, God is a good God. He loves us. He knows and cares when nobody else does. And I praise Him from the depths of my heart. Um, good to have everybody. I can't start naming the churches or I will miss some, but thank you for every time you've come, and thank you for every penny that you've given. You will be rewarded greatly from God, I know. Um, it's good to have so many of my family here. Um, I, I appreciate y'all and love you. Um, I've asked them the other day, they've been at Florida all week, um, but they came in late last night, and I wanted them to sing, and we have, what is your name? <laughs> Justin, I, I didn't even know he played the piano, and I know Brother Dennis earlier this week said, would you like to play it? He said no, and I thought, he plays? <laughs> I love the piano. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I'd like to have them become a our special tonight. Thank you. God bless you. Justin, Brother Justin Henderson. I only met him about a week ago. And when I heard him, I thought, I thought, he sounds a lot like Jay. Jay Max. And I said, Did you are you taking have you taken a lesson from Jay? He said, No, I don't think he even knew Jay. I don't think he's ever had any lessons. He, he's self-taught lessons. And he am, am I right on this? You're <laughs> he is the Alabama State winner of TJ. He should be. <laughs> Somebody told me he was, and I and I thought uh, Joshua was second. No, no. I, he came in first, Joshua. Well, this guy is tremendous. If you've not heard him, he may have been here already this week. But uh, when I heard him, I thought, wow, this is a natural talent he's got. Here. But I'm, I'm going to speak here. We're at Highway. And when I get here, I get so full. I get to I get to looking around at these. This ain't funny. <laughs> Seriously, I get to looking at these windows and this church. And this is the first church I came to probably was about three or four months old. Wow. Stayed right here. Hallelujah. My sister right there. My mother and daddy over here. Baptized down here in Town Creek. I was 14 then. And I got to tell you that uh, when I come here, there, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be whatever the word is, but there's a, there's a presence here for me. I know it's the Holy Ghost. But my great granddaddy and my granddaddy and my daddy and us and my children, Tara, and my grandchildren, six generations. And, the, and then on the Freeman side yet, my granddaddy, my mother, myself, my daughter, five generations for them. I mean, this is me. a rich place to me. And, and I thought, sometimes when I, y'all don't know this, and I'm, Weimer don't even know this, and he lives up here, where my great granddaddy came and built up here. Weimer and Mary Sue. And when that barn was in better shape than it is now, of course we've been out for 27 years, but we were here three and a half. And there's been times since we've been down there that I've come here. When something's burning and loading me down and I can't hold up under it. This is, I want to come back from here. I've climbed up in that loft. I don't even know how many times. I went there now. Because <laughs> it's a health, it's a hazardous place. But even, it was pretty rough then. But I climb up in that barn and I and I, I would feel the presence of the Lord. And I'd get to crying and praising God. And, and Glenn was right over there across the road and I thought, she hear a word I'm hollering and saying, but I somehow didn't care. And God has met with me in the loft of that barn. 
Come on. And God has met with me here. And even on the cemetery, I used to go over there. You think that's a bad place to pray. That's a good place to pray. That's the ultimate rest area. And and I just I just want to tell you, you live here and you come here. But I want you to realize how blessed you are to have this man and this woman and this, these families and and Sister Nava and Dennis. We've got a lot gone, but we got a lot coming up. Our God is an awesome God. And, and we want to sing a song. He, he didn't like to sing. <laughs> but I'd like her to help me sing. She, for, she forgot something. What's that? We were married right here 56 yeah. years ago. Next month. <laughs> This is our last night of revival. So let's give Brother John Richardson a good warm welcome. <laughs> let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give him a shout of triumph. Let's thank him for all the wonderful things that he has done, for the things he's going to do, for the things that he is doing. Thank you for all the wonderful things you've done through Highway Church of God. There's thousands of souls that have been saved directly or indirectly because of this church. What a mighty thing God has done. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Now, before you're seated, I'm going to ask you to do something totally by faith. Although it doesn't take a lot of faith to know that God loves me. It doesn't take a lot of faith for me to know that God wants to bless me more than I want to be blessed. 
It doesn't take a lot of faith for me to realize that as any father, as I as a father want to give my children a good life, my heavenly father wants to give me a super good life, Amen. supernaturally good life. So let's just take a few moments right now and let's thank him for his divine favor. Thank him and praise him for his favor in our life that is all the time being manifested in our lives. And for just a few moments, take some time right now and say, Lord, I thank Thank you for your favor. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for answering my prayers. I thank you for blessing my life. Unspeakable blessings. I thank you for the privilege of praise and worship to have a divine encounter of a heavenly kind every single time I praise you. I thank you for honoring your word and confirming your word with signs following. I thank you, Lord, for the ancient landmarks that we soon not forget them. The great things that God has done. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for the favor you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us into a new season of even greater favor in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to give the Lord a hand clap of praise and a shout of triumph. Yes, God spoke to us last night about the benefits of God's favor. And he gave us five benefits last night and going to give us five more tonight. But, you know, these gifts are earthen vessels. And I have never one time, Brother Upchurch, in my entire life feel like I've ever done a message justice. I never feel like I've done the word of God justice. I've done the best I can. But the best I've tried to describe Jesus, Brother Bruce, I would always fall short. And the best I would always try to preach the message God gave me. There would seemingly be something I would leave out, not deliberately, but because these gifts are in human and weak vessels. But I want to remind you tonight, because I didn't do so last night, that as I speak tonight about God's divine favor, that we are without a doubt entering a season of God's divine favor. I'm not going to be just teaching about the benefits of divine favor. I, there is going to be an impartation of these benefits in our lives. Because if we only have head knowledge alone, we'll know about the favor, but we'll not be able to walk in it because God's favor can only be produced by the supernatural manifestation of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Would somebody shout hallelujah? And guys, I want to tell you that I believe, no, I know, Pastor, I know for sure unless the rapture takes place. Now, if the rapture takes place, all bets are off and I'm not a betting man and you're not betting people. You know what I mean. All our plans don't matter. The Bible said, you know, occupy till he comes, but all those plans that we have to do, work to do for God, should he come back tonight, God will reward us as if I'd already went to Africa, already came back, he's going to reward you for all the souls that would have been saved and all that would have been done because you have already invested into it, so he'll bless you as if it's already been done. Only God can bless in that manner. But saints of God, I want to tell you that God is about to bring his choice into a season of divine favor. And there are several reasons for it. And guys, I want to explain to you what favor means to me. All of you in this room, some of you have been my friends for almost 30 years. In my heart, you are a manifestation of God's favor. It was God's favor that caused you to receive me into your family and to love me like family and to pray for me and support me and always be there for me. And, and I hope I've been that for you. And because of God's favor, he allowed me to become very close and dear friends with brother and sister Chandler. And they, they've had such a tremendous impact upon my life. And when you guys are talking about the history, when I say we don't ever forget the ancient landmark, 
hearts. I'm not implying that anybody's ancient, including myself, but the old landmarks is what it's talking about. And should the Lord tarry, let's never forget, you know, our brother and sister Gilly is buried up in that cemetery and all the things that they had done for the Lord, the songs that they sung. Think about this, saints of God. Brother and sister Hedgepath is buried up in that cemetery and almost everybody in this place knows Brother Billy and Sister Peggy. In fact, probably almost everybody in this place is kin to all those people I just mentioned. What I'm trying to say, guys, I've got to come in and God says, you know what, John? I love you so much, son, and I know despite your weaknesses, the one thing I can depend on, you'll go wherever I send you. If I send you to revival, you're not going to go by how big the church is. If I send you to a country, you're not going to, I just know that you've got the heart to go. So I'm going to bless you. And one of the greatest blessings I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you a brand new family. Because of my background, coming from Italian descent, coming from the background I did, even the members of my family that are saved, they're more closely connected to Catholicism and certainly not connected to Pentecost choice. And so I'm not close to them and they don't do a whole lot of encouraging and they never really have encouraged me a lot in any area. And I'm not whining or crying, but God says, you know what? I'm going to give you a brand new family. I'm going to give you some brother. I'm going to give you a brother named Chris and a sister named Teresa. And I'm going to give you some nieces that will look up to you and call you Uncle John. And I'm going to give you brother and sister Morel and Delilah Upchurch as family. And guys, because of all of you, I'm saying mountain, I've got a family with a rich heritage in Pentecost. Because you can your life. And guys, in my heart, and in, I'm telling you, that's divine favor when God partners you with some of the finest people on the planet Earth, when they bring you up into their lives as a part of the heritage that goes back to when Pentecost, when people were Pentecost, when Pentecost wasn't cool. Brother Maddox, I thank you for letting me be a part of your ministry. I thank you, all of you that have sown so diligently and plowed and labored on Sand Mountain. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of that rich heritage because nobody can harvest where others have not plowed. Nobody can harvest where others have not sown the seed. Nobody can harvest where others did not pull the weeds from time to time out of that garden. I thank you as a blessing from God. You are God's favor in my life and I love you and I can't put in the words how much I care about you, but every Every time I look at you, it reminds me of God's favor in my life because you are a demonstration and a manifestation of that favor. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Choice, I believe, into the greatest season of favor that we have ever known. Now, I'm going to miss a thing or two here, and I, I wrote down a couple. This is so important. I have to write down an order here because God is a God of order. And this favor that God is bringing us into is, first of all, because He loves us. He wants His children to be overcomers. He wants us to be victorious. He desires for us to be more than conquerors. He desires that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. He desires us to have victory in all areas of our life, and that is only possible through supernatural, divine favor of God. And those victories and things are going to increase in these latter days for several reasons. First of all, as a sign to unbelievers, God is going to
going to bless his church with such favor that people that are blind to everything we try to witness to them about, everything we try to tell them about when we talk about God and the need to be saved and how God saved us from hell and how we know we're ready to go in the rapture because of the grace and mercy of God. But for whatever reason, they can't see it. I know what the reason is. It's because they're spiritually blind and they're spiritually deaf. But God is going to bless his children, his hungry children, his faithful children, his committed children that are kingdom minded with so much favor. Even the hardest heart is going to see the blessing of God in their life. And they're going to see God's blessing and they're going to want it for themselves. And they're going to ask us how to meet the God that we serve. The Bible tells us the day is going to come where people are going to cling to the skirts of Jews just to find out the meet the God that blesses them so much. And I believe that day has come. I believe that God is going to bring us into a season of supernatural favor because he wants us to be blessed all the way to the end. But also for this great move of God that's going to take place, there are things that are going to have to be done. And all these things are going to cost money. And that money is to facilitate the work of God. So God is not only going to bless his children so that we leave here the most blessed that we've ever been. Not where our tails tucked between our legs. Waiting, just can't wait to get out because things are going to be are, are so bad for us. No, God's going to bring us out with a shout. God's going to bring us out with a shout. God's going to make sure that we have favor if we're kingdom minded so that we can facilitate the work of God. Whatever doors God opens, whatever opportunities God has us to do something for the kingdom while there's yet time. God is going to give us favor so that we can do those things. God's going to give us favor so no matter what obstacle may come against us to try to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. And let me tell you right now, if God's called you to do something, there will be obstacles. There will be hiccups in the road. The devil will try to put up roadblock. But in the time he does it, you just say to that roadblock, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. So God is bringing us into a season of supernatural favor. But Brother Bruce, if we're going to receive that favor, we've got to know what it is. We've got to know the requirement on our part to receive that favor. Saints of God, if how many of you want to receive all the favor that God desires to give? How many want God to release these 10 benefits of his favor, but not only release it or tell you about it, but impart it into your life? by the Holy Ghost. Then you've got to understand just a few simple principles. In order to enjoy all of God's favor to its maximum, you've got to be kingdom minded. You've got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness yeah. Then all these other things are added on to you. Now, Sister Upchoice, I kind of got tickled up there when, when Sister Tara turned around and, and said, what's your name? It was almost like she was asking her mama, what her name was. And I said, I got to pray for Tara tonight. I got to pray for her. <laughs> but now guys understand what I'm trying to say. She's talking about the piano player. And, but the point that I'm trying to say, saints of God, we've got to have God's favor. And if we want God's favor, we've got to be kingdom on it. If we seek the birth of the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all these other things, home, clothes, and foods will be taken care of. God wants us to be rich. The word rich means more than enough. It's not a number in my bank account. It's not stocks with the Dow and the Jones. It's saying whatever comes in my future, I will have more than enough to take care of that time. To me, that's rich. Isn't that to me? That sense of God favor also means that I'll have supernatural divine protection as I go for God. But to have that protection, I 
I've got to go for God. And then also, if I want God's divine favor, this is so simple. I've got to ask for it. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's that simple. Do I make the time to diligently seek the Lord? Do I make time to pray? Is going to the house of God a priority in my life? It is worship a priority in my life. And next, we not only have to be faithful to the call, we not only have to seek the Lord, then we must look inside and be willing to crucify our flesh daily. The thought of killing your flesh every single day. And please do not go home and beat yourself with a whip or stab yourself or try to... He's not talking about physically crucifying yourself. It's saying to God that every single day when you get up, that I identify with the cross of Calvary. It is no longer I that live it, but it is Christ Jesus that liveth in me. In order to walk in God's divine favor every day to have favor that day. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is not some magic wand. This is not some pop a pill and you'll have it for the rest of your life. You've got to make a conscious decision every day to crucify your flesh afresh and anew. But if you do, then that day it will be no longer you that liveth, but Christ Jesus that liveth in you. So that's divine favor. And tonight, last night, I don't know that they taped the service last night. I don't know if we're taping these services. I know that it's going out through whatever the telephone is. They are taping the services. It, okay, so stop by and get a copy of the tape from last night and learn about the principles that God taught us. Gave us the definition of favor so that we understand it because the definition tells us how we receive it. So guys, although God's divine favor is going to be made available to us as never before. We've got to recognize what it is in order to receive it. You see, the, the subject matter of favor, Chris, is a little bit tricky. God is so good and God is so gracious. God never walks around Tommy saying, look at me. Look what I just did for you. You know how miserable your life would be if it wasn't for me blessing you all the time. No, God just does all these wonderful things for us and he does it so discreetly that if we're not mindful we won't realize that every breath we breathe is a blessing from God. Every dollar we make is a blessing from God. The house we live in is a blessing from God. The car you drove here in is a blessing from God. Your tomorrow is a blessing from God. Your children are blessings from God. So if we're not careful, saints of God, we won't even realize that we're walking in divine favor and favor is being shown. So sometimes, Pastor Upchoit, we don't always know when we have God's favor. But I'll tell you what you always will know. You'll know when you don't have God's favor. Because right. stuff will start going wrong and, all, and you'll try with all your might to fix stuff and it won't be fixable. Why? Because when you don't have God's favor, you can write this down as thus saith John when you don't have God's favor let me tell you all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty back together again the only one that can bless your life is God somebody shout hallelujah so last night God spoke to us, gave us the definition of his favor. So I want to just do a brief synopsis of the five benefits of God's favor he talked about last night. How many want to hear it again? I'm not going to teach you what the words mean like I did last night, but I want to give you the first five so I can give you the next five. Then you can get the CDs and go over it and hear it and listen to it over and over again and let it take that 18-inch drop from your head to your heart. And once you got heart faith, you got the kind of faith that can move man. Mountains. Someone shout hallelujah. The first benefit of God's favor, which is an impartation. Understand it. That's why we're going to pray for you in this altar. I don't have a message of mere words. The words I speak are not my own. They're God's. And the works that are done are not mine. There's God. And God is going to do the impartation. Now the first favor or benefit of God's favor or impartation of God's favor is now you know one of the favors I need. I need God either to heal my eyeballs or, or 
or, or, or getting a set of glasses to wear. And, but it, the first failure from God is supernatural promotion and increase. How many of you would like to experience supernatural promotion in your life and increase? Now, guys, promotion in God isn't always like a better job, though usually it is. It's not always more stuff. It means that you get to do more for the kingdom. But remember, you can't do anything for the kingdom of God that goes unnoticed by God. God is rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word of God repeatedly tells us that he'll be indebted to no man. How many, somebody shout hallelujah. The second benefit of God's favor, that there's going to be a supernatural increase from now to the rapture of the church so that we can facilitate the move of God, so that we can be assigned to the non-believer of God's favor, so we can overcome the antichrist spirit in these last days. All these things, the supernatural favor of God will do in our life. The second benefit of God's favor or impartation of God's favor is restoration to all the enemy has ever stolen from you, including things he took from you while you were in disobedience, while you are in, were in sin. Aren't you glad that God didn't just save you, but God has restored you? Aren't you glad when you confessed your sin, he was faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness? Some of Somebody shout hallelujah. The third benefit of God's favor. This is a really good one. It is honor in the midst of adversity. God will honor you in the midst of adversity.